Hello and welcome to lecture 12. This is lecture on nested designs. And I do want to be clear here, lecture 12 or module 12 and module 13 are the same thing. We're just using different words to talk about the same thing. Nested designs and split plot designs, as far as we're concerned, talk about the exact same thing. So 12 and 13 are re repeats of each other. But I did it this way because I think it's important to cover this material twice. The first time to get an idea that nested designs are different, and the second is to actually, once again, see how that difference affects the calculations. Yeah, that's why. Okay, so we're going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to draw a picture to show you what a nested design may look like. I'm going to show you some notation, maybe do an algebraic equation or so. But realize the algebraic equation is just there to symbolize the relationship we're trying to understand. We're far beyond the point where we can actually do these things by hand reasonably. I mean, we could, we could spend an hour or so doing a nested design by hand, but the reality is the computer is the way to go. Whether you use SAS or R or one of the other programs, you're going to want to use the computer to do these calculations. So let's start with an example of a nested design. And how I'm going to generate this nested design is I'm going to start with an experiment and we're going to talk about ways of actually performing that experiment or, or testing for a relationship. So here's the, here, and let's do it this way. I have three ways of teaching some topic. I don't care what topic it is. We'll call it way one, way two, way three. Now, what I would eventually like to do is determine which of those three ways is best at teaching the topic. And otherwise, why would I do this? So let's think through a process that we can use or an experiment that we could design to do this. And honestly, there's a lot of them. So one way is I have three classes, three completely identical classes, um, stat 2013, let's say. And in one of those classes, I use way one. In another class, I use way two. In another class, I use way three. So these ways would actually now not be way one. It would be class one and class two and class three. And from that class, we're actually pulling from all students. And within class one, I've got I don't know, 40 different students I can measure, but I'm just going to do like four lines here. In class two, I got 40. In class three, I've got 40. So little n is 40. Little n is 40. Little n is 40. So it's a balanced design. Capital N is 120. And what I have here is called a one-way, completely randomized design experiment. One way because one fixed effects variable, and there's no other sources of variation except for the sources within the students themselves. So there would be A minus 1 degrees of freedom for the fixed effect. There's only one fixed effect here, so there's no interaction. There would be A n minus 1 total. which leaves a n minus 1 minus a minus 1, which actually is a n minus 1, a minus times a minus 1, uh, degrees of freedom explained by the experimental error, or residual uh, degrees of freedom. And this is actually a design from the first week, and it works. But notice I'm the one teaching all three of these classes. So it's going to be impossible to distinguish between the effect of the way and the effect of the me. A better design would include other teachers in this. So let's add this in here. Well, let's do this. Teacher 1, teacher 2, Teacher three, now we have 
have to ask ourselves. Are we going to have teacher one just teach way one, and teacher two teach just way two, and teacher three just teach way three? In other words, is this the drawing we want? Because if that's the drawing we want, if we want teacher one to only teach way one, and teacher two to only teach way two, and teacher three to only teach way three, then we've actually moved backwards. Whereas before we were marginally controlling for the effect of me in the classroom here, there's absolutely no way of determining if the effect is teacher one or if it's a boy one. So it's always better to, if we're going to split it up like this, to have teacher one teach all three different ways and teacher two to teach all three different ways. We'll pretend. And I'll just extend out this one, but the same, same lines go there. And the way I have this drawn is teacher one will teach way one to one class of students. So again, instead of looking at these as way one, way two, and way three, we could actually think this is class one, class two, class three. And then teacher two would also teach way one to class one, way two to class two, way three to class three, and teacher three would teach teach way one to class one, way two to class two, and way three to class three. And this is also perfectly acceptable uh, experimental design. Nothing wrong with this. This is a, called a crossover design. It's what we've been using. I'm just giving a new word, crossover. And it's a crossover design because teach, uh, way one gets taught by teacher one, teacher two, and teacher three. So it crosses over. Again, it's nothing new. This is also a factorial experiment. Another word for it is factorial experiment because each combination of way with teacher has at least one measurement in it. Um, if the class sizes are all the same, it's also a balanced design because each combination will have the same little n in it. And again, there's nothing wrong with this design. It may not be the design that actually is used, however. Because let's think about this. Where is Teacher 1? Where does Teacher 1 work? Teacher 1 works at Oklahoma State University. Teacher 2 works at Oklahoma State University. Teacher 3 works at Oklahoma State University. So the results that we get may not be general, generalizable outside of Oklahoma State University. To better argue generalizability, to better argue that your model works for everyone in the population, you should pull from different schools as well. So instead of teacher one, teacher two, and teacher three from one school, you'd have several schools and several teachers within each school, and several teacher, each of those teachers teaches the different ways to different classes. In other words, here's that picture. three schools should I use? I'm going to use different color. Red. Oklahoma State University, um, St. Louis University, Texas Tech. So those are my three schools. Notice that this is a random effect because I'm pulling those three schools out of a much larger population and I'm not trying to compare the outcomes of OSU versus St. Louis University. I'm just pulling three schools out of the air and trying to use them. So this is a fixed effect. I'm sorry, this is a random effect. And then within each of those schools, I'm pulling several teachers. Hence the teacher is also going to be a random effect. So from OSU, we'll use teacher one, two, and three. From St. Louis University, oops. I'm going to have 
three other teachers. Oh, but wait a moment. I have a teacher one from Oklahoma State and a teacher one from St. Louis. Those aren't the same teacher. The teacher that you get depends on the university. The teacher you get depends on the university. The teachers are nested within the university. There's where the word nesting design comes from. And we're going to, instead of use one, two, three for all, we're going to sequentially number this. Sorry about that. Battery run dead again. So I believe I told you I was going to number these sequentially. So at this point, you can see the nesting design. And let me go ahead and draw it, use some dirty stuff here. Look at the nesting design to this experiment. I mean, we're starting with all, all the students, and we're looking at Oklahoma State University students, and we're nesting in the teachers within those Oklahoma State University students. And then maybe we can go even further in class one, class two, class three, within each of these teachers, etc. That's the nesting part of the nested design. And again, this is design, so we're not going to uh, talk about factorial experiments at, at this point, but ex factorial experiments would fit on top of this. This is just the design part. Um, some terminology. Ooh, I've got too many threes. Terminology, I'm going to get rid of one of these teachers in each. And teachers are going to have four classes each. Okay, and that's red. I will go back. So if we call these levels A, B, and C, or let's call them U, T, and C, we go with that. U, T, C. Double check that this is in there, and I do want to be quick about this for battery. Yeah, you can see that far. Then the number of degrees of freedom for u is going to be the usual little u minus 1. I'm going to put degrees of freedom on the other side. And the symbol for it will be a little u for each of those levels. Here, when we're looking at the teaching, we have to indicate that the teachers are nested within the universities. So there's the T, and then inside the parentheses would be U. Then this is read as teachers are nested within the universities, or as teachers within the universities, or the teachers are a function of the university, if you're a math person. And then C, the C's are nested within the teachers. But the teachers are nested within the universities, so technically the C's are also nested within the universities. Note that the variation of the universities is due to the randomness of the universities, plus the teacher variation, plus the class variation. So we'll go over here for degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for the university, again, is just u minus 1. Degrees of freedom for the teaching, that's just u times t minus 1. <gasps> wow, that's our first difference. And the reason why it's not u minus 1 times t minus 1, or just straight t minus 1, is because these teachers are nested within the university. So the knowledge of teacher 8 tells us nothing about Oklahoma State University. This teacher aid only tells us something about tes Texas Tech. So the degrees of freedom are similarly adjusted to reflect the fact that the degrees of freedom for the teachers are going to be the degrees of freedom within each of these universities, t minus 1, times the number of universities. And now you tell me, what would be the number of degrees of freedom for the class? Well, there's four classes per teacher within two teachers per university within those three universities. So you've got that C minus 1. But this full class
class four has nothing to do with the class four associated with teacher five. That this class four for teacher one has nothing to do with the class four for teacher two. And this class four has, for OSU has nothing to do with the class four for Texas Tech. That's a U, by the way. Uh, that's a U. So the degrees of freedom are also altered to reflect this nested design. This is not a crossover design. If this were a crossover design, then the degrees that this is nested crossover. Let's see if I can see crossover on the screen. I can barely see crossover on the screen. It'd still be u minus 1, but this would be t minus 1, and this would be c minus 1. Plus interactions. There's no interactions on a nested model, or for this aspect of the nested model. There can only be interactions with crossovers. Now, realize that you could have a nested design that has a crossover design with it. How would I show that here? That's going to be kind of difficult. I could say that these two teachers are the same as these two teachers are the same as these two teachers. In which case, we'd have a crossover design for teachers and universities, but we'd still have a nested design for the classes. Because this class 3 would be different from this class 3. So it is possible to have both the crossover and the nesting in the same design. But that's beyond the scope of this course. That would be the 5303, I believe it's 5303 experimental design. Really great course. I strongly recommend it. It's also taught both face-to-face -face and online. So you can do that one. But it gets into a lot of this, it refreshes your memory of what we did in this course. Plus it extends a lot of what we did. Plus it gets into some of the more complicated, more useful designs. Simple designs are usually really good for doing things by hand. Complicated designs tend to better match the experiments that we perform. So be aware of that. Oh, so here, the degrees of freedom for nesting are not the same as the degrees of freedom for the crossover. Because the computer programs default to a crossover design. So they're going to be dividing, for their F statistics, they're going to be dividing by the wrong mean squared. Which means you're either going to have to find some way of telling that computer program what the correct mean squared is, or you'll have to do it by hand. So this is it, I, I think. Mm, yeah, that's good enough. So this is the end of this lecture. Um, there is a split plot design lecture, which is exactly the same thing as nested design, as far as we're concerned. Um, but again, nested design, split plot designs, the key is the degrees of freedom, and therefore the expected mean squares, and therefore the F statistics. Got to pay attention to those F statistics, specifically the denominators. So from here, you go to your R or your SAS, where you will find out how to get that correct F statistic so you can test it. Nested designs. This was fun. Take care. I'll see you later.